So you want to be a picture book writer, then you got to write picture books. And you're going to need a bucket load of bright ideas for titles, plots, and hooks. If you're partial to prose or you're raring to rhyme, then repeat after me. It's a challenge, but I'm going to tackle each story one month at a time with 12 by 12. I said in the description that writing for me is not so much about writing what you know as writing what you feel. And I think for me, my emotions have always come first. If I were to write what I know, I think I would just spew out endless lists of fact. But in order to give readers, especially young readers, the emotional honesty that I feel that they deserve, I have to make myself vulnerable and you know jump off that wall to the other side. It's really hard work and it's often triggering. Um, I think that's why I like this word mining, mining your life. It shows how laborious a process it is to extract just a few nuggets that go into your story. But when you, maybe I'm extending this metaphor too far, but when you hit a vein, when the memories and the emotions start pouring out of you, it can be both a really rewarding and healing experience. But also remember that you can choose to dig just a little bit at a time, right? Go at the speed that you're comfortable with and remember to take care of yourself too. And I like to start off with guidelines. Make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you know you're in a quiet place. That's what you need. You've got your drinks, your snacks, et cetera. And I wanna remind everybody that this is a safe space and I don't want you to censor yourself what you're writing is just for you. No one else is going to read it. And what you do with it is entirely up to you. And don't try to control the writing. Just keep going. Don't delete. Don't cross out. Just keep writing forward and let it all flow. That's why I like pen and paper because uh, A, I can't erase it. And if I'm typing on a computer screen, the urge to use the delete key is pretty overwhelming sometimes. I even don't put on my glasses when I'm free writing. So I can't really read what I'm writing. I just keep going. And that sometimes is helpful as well. And remember, it's really the small moments of our lives. I'm not looking for these big, important story moments. It's the small moments that matter. If you think about Watercraft, if you've read it, it is a story about a young girl who picks watercrest with her family, something that she does not want to do. And it was this small memory of that day that kept haunting me. And I felt really compelled to write about it, even though I didn't really know what it meant. And so it wasn't until I dove into myself and free wrote about it for a while and really tried to be vulnerable and understand how I felt as a young child um, in that ditch that the story really became what it is today. I really recommend breathing before doing free writing because it can be a difficult process, but it also does help you relax and become more present. So while I'm talking, if you can just take in a couple of deep breaths to the count of four, hold them for a count of two, and then breathe out for a count of four, um, or just to take some really deep cleansing breaths and repeat that a few times. That would be great. And you can also do some deep breathing anytime during the writing exercises as a way to reset yourself, or if you just need a moment to collect yourself. All right, everybody have pen and paper. We're going to do a quick warm up exercise. We're going to start with something super, super easy, which is who are you? <laughs> Just very quickly, we're going to take 30 seconds, write down your name, the name you prefer to be called, the name you wish you had. Not everyone has the name that we wish we had. What age do you remember most vividly from childhood? I found this an interesting question to answer because some authors say that the age that you remember most vividly is the age group you should write for. Although I find that my 
most vivid recollections are probably from middle school. And I do write middle grade, but I really love writing picture books. So it doesn't mean that you can't write in all, for all ages. And who are your family members at that age that you remember most vividly? Who do you consider to be family and best friends at this age? So just really simple questions to get us started and to get us into the headspace of our younger self. One of the techniques I like to do is free association where I'm sure most of you have heard of it, but in case you haven't, it's where you let your mind roam without censorship, without structure, and you just naturally make random connections between thoughts. It's also known as stream of consciousness. When you're fully relaxed and able to freely associate, you can identify patterns of thought, you can identify impulses, fears, and then you can explore those later. Um, and it also helps you look at the world from a number of different perspectives and without labeling those perspectives as right or wrong or positive or negative. It's just, it just is, right? There are no right or wrong answers in any of the writing that we're doing today. Okay, so this is another writing exercise. It's called home. I want you to envision your childhood home. Write down as many single words as you can to describe what, what you smell, what you hear, taste, and feel. It's okay to repeat the same word. In fact, if that word keeps coming up for you in free association, just keep writing it down. That's fine. They may be people, either your mom, your dad, or their names, et cetera. It could be places, it could be objects, activities, food, and of course, emotions. And so when the time is up, we'll go back and circle any repeated words and put an asterisk next to words that you associate with the strongest emotion. Together, so never you fear. It's a handy little way to help you kick into gear. You're amazing, exciting. Look out, cause you're writing. 12 by 12. 12 manuscripts. 12 by 12. 12 picture books. 12 by 12. 